to BTC Spotlight Interview presents and current NWA Southeastern Heavyweight Champion and New Japan Pro Wrestling Star and current Bullet Club member Chase Owens. Chase, how are you this afternoon? I'm good. How are you guys? I'm uh, doing quite well. It's a little warm where I'm at over here on uh in New Jersey. It's finally hitting that ninety degree weather. Yeah, it's pretty pretty nice outside of here where I'm at in Virginia as well. Well, that's definitely good to hear. It's about time we're breaking away from that cold. So we actually just had a uh from my understanding, one of your best friends on last week, Matt Sigmund. Yeah, uh Matt's definitely one of my one of my closest friends, uh, you know, met him eight years ago or, or so. And, uh, you know, truthfully, uh, didn't like him when I first met him. But now over the years we've grown, it, you know, and he's the guy that I can tell anything personal to or, uh, you know, if I need suggestions or to watch a match and, and see if there's anything that needs to be critiqued. He's one of the guys that I trust more than anything. So what you're saying is if I ever need any dirt on you, I just got to go to Matt about it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you tell, though. But, uh, this years is ago, true. he might have. <laughs> well, especially after you beat him to win your first title. I mean, hey, I'm just throwing it out there. Matt, don't forget, he beat you for his first title. <laughs> um, I beat him a lot over and, the years. Hey, you know what? And I'm sure he's beating you as well. It's a back and yeah, forth. That's true. Thing. So let's get the ball rolling on this. You know, it, you were trained by none other than WWE Hall of Famer, now Hall of Famer, I should say, Ricky Morton, who has been a previous guest of ours. What was that like, man? Uh, it was a great experience. You know, I was 17, 18 years uh, of age at the time, and just, you know, he didn't have his uh, wrestling school like he does now, so. There wasn't really anywhere to, uh, you know, to go weekly and train. It was just in the car, at the building, you know, before shows, uh, you know, in the back during the shows, on the road home, uh, you know. And a lot of people don't know this, but uh, Bobby Eaton used to live 20 minutes away from us. So, uh, you know, a lot of times it was me, him, and Ricky in the car, and I was just, you know, just grasping all this knowledge that was being thrown out. You know, it's always great when you get the ability to not only get trained by one legend, but even though you're not necessarily getting trained by another, you're still being taught by another just by, like you said, grasping the knowledge and soaking it all in. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's some of these younger guys in the business now. uh, They think they, you know, are just, owed something or or whatever you know when when I started I was going to every seminar possible learning from you know anybody that I can uh you know that had been somewhere and and had some name value because you know even now you you know you you never stop learning and I don't think you necessarily stop learning even after you're done with the business to an extent, yeah, because now you know, there's, there's uh, Ricky people tells that... me. Ricky tells me at the school, you know, that uh, he tells the students as well. You know, him watching me train them, you know, he'll pick up something that I picked up somewhere else, you know, that he'd never seen or heard, you know, before. Right, and not only that, but you also get the aspect if you get some of these guys that move on to be field scouts, so to speak. Um, because I mean, some people consider, I still call it wrestling to this day. I still call it pro wrestling. You have your guys that call it sports entertainment. To me, I'm 33 years old. I grew up with it being called pro wrestling. So I consider it wrestling. I consider it an athletic sport. So I, that's why I call them field agents, you know, like scouts. So you have guys that are learning that. You have guys that are learning the production aspect. That's why I said you're still learning even after you're done with the in-ring stuff. Yeah, you know, uh, there, I know some guys that, uh, you know, not just learning in-ring, but learning, like you said, the production and, you know, and, and everything that there is because eventually, 
you know, your your bump card's running out and you won't be able to actually compete in ring anymore and you know, and there's other things that uh that can you can do that will still have your you know, your yourself in the professional wrestling business. one hundred percent agree with that. And that's like you know, you got guys like um Wow, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, you get guys like, uh, for example, who's managing the, the Authors of Pain right now? Uh, Ellering, um, Paul Ellering. That's yeah. right, Paul Ellering. He was in, in rank competitor at one point, and now you look at him, and he's transitioned into a manager. Yep, you know, there's you always take different, the bumps different things to do. Right. So now you've had feuds, you know, with some big names in the indie circuit, like Jason Kincaid, you know, like Tony Givens, uh, Matt Sigmund, uh, quite a few. You know, the names, the list Richards. goes on. Yes. Uh, there's another one. Um, you've actually battled uh, Rapongi Vice as well. Yeah, over in New Japan. You know, Correct. And as a matter of fact, you were teaming with Kenny Omega for that. Who would you say was one of your your favorite matches that you can go back and say, you know, I would face this guy any day of the week, seven days a week if I could, out of all the guys that you've you've wrestled against? Uh, You know, that's hard because there's several – you know, there's guys like Jason Kincaid, who's, I think, you know, is one of the absolute best. That guys that has uh, never been signed to a contract anywhere, even though he's, you know, just recently picked up a uh, a contract down at Evolve or WWN or or whatever it is. But uh, you know, he's a guy. Uh, Sigmund's a guy. Sean Schultz is a guy. Uh, you know, those guys are. The chemistry we have together is just. You know, it's like nothing else with anybody else, and those guys are so good and can, you know, can make anybody look good. And you know, and it's it's like a night off when when you're wrestling those guys. But if you know, favorite match ever, uh, had to be my match with AJ Styles. You know, that was who I was wanting to be when I started professional wrestling, and uh, you know, he's who I've looked up to, and that was the match I always wanted. And it's funny you say that because I was actually thinking to myself, you know, as I went through, you know, your list of matches and everything like that, as I was researching, you know, anything, you know, to write down questions to ask you, I'm thinking to myself, man, this guy got to wrestle the likes of AJ Styles. For And for those that don't know who AJ Styles is, they're pretty much living under a rock because this guy is a 17-year-plus veteran, and he's done everything. He's won all the major titles, and I don't. Yeah, know right now, I think this. he's the absolute best in the world. That's why he's got the name, the phenomenal one, because it, you could put him in. Look what he did at WrestleMania with Shane McMahon. I don't know if you had a chance to catch that match, but Shane McMahon is a man that will put his body on the line to make sure a match is good. But when you get a guy like AJ Styles in there that knows what he's doing, he can make anybody look good. Yeah, I had a lot of people, uh, you know, of course, all these Facebook bookers, uh, you know, they, oh, why put AJ in there with Shane? It's going to suck. And I never thought for one minute that match was going to suck. Because like you said, Shane, you know, even though he's not the best wrestler, but he's willing to do whatever it takes to to make a match good and, and when you have AJ Styles who can make, you know, a broomstick look good, uh, you know, it, the match is going to be good. Right, and you, you grew, you growing up a wrestling fan yourself, you obviously watched WWE, you know, in the late '90s, early 2000s, you know, as as a little right. kid. So you look back at Shane McMahon, what he did against another phenomenal in-ring competitor like Kurt Angle at King of the Ring 2000. That's all I have to say. Getting thrown yeah, you know, like, that glass yeah, the way he did. Uh, Shane, you know, even not, not the best wrestler, he, he always performs. 
You know, you can't never. I don't think there's a match that I can think of that, it, you know, oh, Shane sucked. Yeah, no, I don't. I can't recall one myself. I really can't. You know, but, you know, you mentioned AJ. It, realistically, like, the kind of guy that he is that I sense, he's a guy that will teach you in and out of the ring as well, no matter who he's working with. Um, but what was it like? Uh, now, when you wrestled AJ, was this before being with the Bullet Club or during the Bullet Club? Uh, it was May, and I joined in October. So it was before, uh, you know, I'd been wrestling for New Japan. Uh, so, you know, knew AJ from there. And then, uh, you know, it was nine years after I started, you know, I got to, to wrestle this dream match. And, uh, you know, it was probably the most nerve-wracking match I've ever been a part of, you know, just because I didn't. Everybody built it up so much, uh, you know, months prior that I didn't want to let Tony Givens down. I didn't want to let myself down, you know, because I knew it was a big opportunity. Fully understandable. I mean, I think I would be in your shoes because the guy that I grew up, who was my idol, was uh, was Shawn Michaels. Yeah, and I, that's you know, who I that's had. a guy that's that I, I loved to and had a match with. You know, I want to speaking. Of, you know, these are these are two. I got injured in a botched move, and, you know, it changed my course of history as we know it. Um, guys that we both looked up to, AJ Styles and Shawn Michaels, if that match would have happened, and I know, you know, you've heard the internet buzz about it. What is your opinion on that? Well, I think it would be one of the greatest matches in the history of professional wrestling. Now, do you think that it was something that should have happened or it should have just been, you know what, he's retired, let it be? Uh, you know, I, I, I think the guy still I think got it in draw. the tank. Yeah, I think Sean can still still go, you know. Uh, even in his last several years, you know, in-ring competition, he was putting on great performances night in, night out. You know, matches with Taker – are some of the greatest ever as well. Hey, look, they, there are people that still arguably will state that that first match against Taker at tw- WrestleMania 25 will go down as the greatest wrestling or WrestleMania match in history. I'm not yeah, going to argue awesome. that. But moving on from that, back to you, sir. You are also a, I believe, three-time World Junior Heavyweight Champion. Now, again, that's that's another accomplishment that, you know, it just stacks up. I mean, you've got probably over a dozen championship reigns in its own, combination of each type. Which belt would you say, which title would you say, you know, has meant the most to you? Uh, I think it would be the NWA World Junior title. Uh, you know, that was... The you know the NWA was a big thing back in the day, and uh, you know it's it's trying to make a comeback and just went under some new management. So hopefully you know that helps as well. But uh, you know just to be able to be on that list, uh, you know, with some of the great champions that have held that belt, uh, you know, Ultimo Dragon, uh, you know, guys like that, Danny Hodge, uh, you know, just to be on that list, and and not only to be on the list. But, you know, I, I think I ended up maybe fifth or sixth all-time of days held, you know, out of all the reigns, uh, you know, on that list. Uh, you know, and it's it was a title that I got to take to Japan and, and defend. You know, that's the belt that got me to Japan uh, for New Japan. Right. And that's what opened uh, the door you know, for you. Yep, and I, I defended it in Canada, uh, you know, so it's it was – a legit world title, you know, you get all these indie companies that have their world titles but never leaves the, you know, whatever promotion that it's the world title of, uh, you know, but that, belt, right. you know, definitely meant, uh, meant a lot. 
Now, is it the, the first rain that you got with it or the third rain? Uh, they all had, you know, significance. Uh, you know, the, the first one, obviously, you know, like I said, just being able to put myself on the list, uh, you know, and then, um, you know, losing it to Ricky Morton, but then winning it back from him with, you know, the, was the second title reign, uh, or third. No, that was the third, I believe. Uh, you know, just, just to share that moment with him, you know, the guy that trained me, my mentor, you know, again, one of my best friends, father figure, uh, you know, in the professional wrestling business, you know, each one of those title reigns, you know, had some significance, you know, in each one. Well, it seems that you've had a, a huge connection to Ricky in your career because not only has he, the man trained you, um, not only, if I'm not mistaken, do you guys more or less come from the, the same neck of the woods? You're both from Tennessee, uh, correct? I'm from Virginia, but it, in the city, it's uh, half Virginia, half Tennessee, and he lives on the Tennessee side, about 15 minutes. Oh from me. yeah, you're you're over at that that. Hey, look, I'm on this side. Of this, I'm in this side now. I'm on this side section. Yep. <laughs> That's where the the Geico commercial was filmed at, I think. Yeah, exactly. State Street. Oh. Uh, Yes. So, but not only that, you know, and then like you said, winning the title, him winning it off of you and then you winning it off of him, but you also more or less saved the man's career. And, you know, you against Kid Cash. Yeah, you know, uh, Cash is another guy that Ricky uh, trained years ago. And, you know, and at Smoky Mountain, they had this this thing start up and – you know, it was supposed to be Cash and uh, and Ricky, but you know, Cash took uh, took offense that I was Ricky's new boy, uh, you know, or whatever. So, uh, you know, so it was me versus Kid Cash. You know, if Cash lost, he uh, he retired, and if you know, if he beat me, then Ricky would retire. And, and sure enough. Ricky Morton's still going at it today. <laughs> yeah, still three, you know, four times a week, too, you know. I, I, I guarantee that that actually – that moment when I watch that Hall of Fame induction with, you know, with the Rock and Roll Express, when Ricky said what he said to Robert about he's got four brothers – in life, but in his heart, he's got five and actually had to turn away from the view of everybody. I'm not going to lie. I got a lump in my throat. That was oh, one of those well. heartfelt uh, moments. You know, I was over in Japan. Uh, I was supposed to be there with Ricky. Ricky got me, uh, you know, a ticket to sit with the family and do everything with him, uh, you know, that whole week. But about two weeks before uh, we were supposed to go down there, I got called to uh to go to Japan so I wasn't able to experience that but you know we texted every day and he was sending pictures to me and uh you know and then even though we were on the bus headed to a uh a show you know me and and some of the boys we were watching the the Hall of Fame on you know on the WWE network app uh, you know and it's amazing that you know you still you have the, the connection with Ricky that you do. Cause I've, I've heard stories that, you know, some people get trained, but then they lose touch with the person that trained them. You know, they grow apart, whatever it may be, traveling, this, that family, whatever the case may be. But you and Ricky have managed to stay basically like, you know, like father and son, more or less, um, which I think is phenomenal. You know, and no pun intended to, you know, AJ, but, you know, I think it's it's amazing that you guys are able to keep that, you know, solidarity. Yeah, you know, even with, with everything that I'm doing now, you know, we don't really get to travel to the same shows together anymore, but, you know, being so close, uh, you know, I'm able to just go to his house or, you know, we go to the, the his school together on Tuesday nights to to train people and uh, you know we'll we'll go bowling or just go out to eat or you know 
go out to the lake, go to the pool, whatever, you know, we're able to right. to stay in touch. And, you know, and like I said, you know, he's like a father figure. And, you know, just like he said last night on, on the way home, you know, he's family. His kids are family. You mentioned, you know, with the traveling and, you know, that aspect. What it, when you first got the call to say, "Hey, you're coming to Japan," what did that feel like for you? Oh, it was definitely amazing, you know. Uh, and truthfully, you know, I, I hate to say this, but I didn't even know about like New Japan, you know, when I was growing up. Uh, it wasn't until hey, I started you're watching not the only it. With, one. You know, I, I started watching it probably. 2011, 2012, with uh, with Pony Givens, I'd go to his house and he would, you know, have shows that he downloaded or or whatever, and uh, we would watch the shows, you know. And then I remember saying, "Man, I'd love to wrestle over there," but never thought I would. You know, so for for that to uh, that opportunity to come about, you know, it was, it was a great feeling, and you know, and a lot of people hated on me for it, you know, saying I didn't deserve it or, you know, or whatever. But Yeah, well, uh, those are the people that are the ones that I feel like don't put in as much effort into stuff. That think that it's because of who you may know and who you may not know that gets you where you are. But from what I can tell you were definitely a man that busted his hump to get where he's at now. You know, that's just like, um, you don't just that where you're at in your career now with like, for example, the bullet club, you know, now I won't, I won't talk about, you know, how you ended up in there. We'll leave that a mystery. But my question is this, the night they unveiled you knowing that, Nobody knew it was coming. What did that feel like for you? Oh, you know, again, that's a huge opportunity because, uh, you know, at the time and still is one of the hottest things going in, in professional wrestling, especially, you know, when I joined. Uh, but, you know, I, I think several things had factors in it, you know, me being uh, friends with Luke Gallows, you know, when he was – in between uh, WWE or TNA and uh, in New Japan, you know, he was doing some indie shows and was on them. And oh, this was back. This was back after his Aces and Eights uh, run, right? Yep. And uh, okay, you know, so so uh, you know, so got kind of close with him, and the, you know, and then like I said, I wrestled AJ in May, and then you know, October rolled around, and I got the call for to join Bullet Club. Uh, so I think that match helped tremendously, and and that's more in my and they've been around probably close to I would have to say a decade realistically. If I'm if I'm doing my math correctly, I mean one of the first leaders was you know Finn Balor. Then it moves to AJ. Then it's Kenny Omega. Um, it's it's one of those groups that are the best of the best are in there. If you're not, you know, out of meaning like out of Ring of Honor and New Japan, and they bring in, like I said, the best of the best. <clears throat> I mean, we've seen guys like AJ Gallows and Anderson, um, Tama Tonga, uh, the Bucks. Uh, you know, Jesus. Right now, yeah, are, the young bucks are one of the you, greatest tag teams going. Right, you know, it's you. You have it's synonymous with greatness, more or less. And once you've reached that point, you know you're there in a company that's outside of what Impact is and what WWE is. If you hit that level, in my opinion, you've made it. Yeah, you know, every, every guy in there is, uh, you know, you got guys like Cody Rhodes and, and every, you know, uh, everything. But uh, 
I will have to correct you. It, it just was the fourth anniversary of Bullet Club just a couple weeks ago. Was it? So it had so it hadn't been uh, close to a decade yet, but hopefully we're still going I, in a in a decade. I could have sworn because I remember Finn Balor being a leader, and I thought he oh uh, you know what he might have been in New Japan just like that long in general. Yeah, that yeah, might have been what it was. There. Okay. That good while because uh, Carl Anderson was, was in Japan eleven, twelve years or something like that as well. Hmm. Then yeah, that's probably what. Well, then my apology. I thank you for correcting me. Hey, I'll admit when I'm wrong. Like you said before, you, I, I really didn't start watching New Japan until like 2012, 13, 14, somewhere around there. So, and that was only off and on. So I really didn't get the general basis of when they it was started. Hard to watch so it. I definitely you, know, you didn't have you didn't have the uh the new Japan world now you know and, and the ways to get it. Right. And I'll tell you what, I finally caught my first Wrestle Kingdom this year and that match between <laughs> Kenny and Okada was just I I don't even have words for that. Mind blowing. Yeah, Kenny's another one that's, uh, you know, one of the absolute best in the world. And well, I'm glad hit, you know, that's not that taking anything away from Okada. Oh no, not at all, not at all. You know, they're both fan- they're both fantastic guys. You know, I- I'm glad Kenny stayed where he's at. I feel that if he would have gone anywhere else, they would have <sighs> watered him down, so to speak. And I don't think he would have been as high octane. Now, speaking of people going places and doing things, what? How do you feel about Marty being in and Adam being out? Oh, I think Marty's a uh, a great addition. You know, ever since he's really uh, exploded onto the the indie wrestling scene here, and you know, and and things like that. You know, he's a technician. He's he's got charisma. He's you know he's a great athlete. Uh, you know, he's unique uh, too. Yeah, you know, definitely a, a great addition. You know, like you said, when when you think Bullet Club, you think some of the absolute best. You know, and and that's how we stay strong. Um, now, how do you feel about Adam being out? Now, I know, I know realistically what it is. I know that it's. And I'll just say it out to because with the internet, everybody already knows, you know, there's rumors circulating. And I'll just keep it as rumors that he might be coming to NXT. You know, Chicago being, I believe, his hometown, that showing up, that being there this weekend. There's a lot of rumors and speculation. Um, well, I haven't heard but, uh, for sure or anything, but, uh, you know, like you said, there's. With the internet, there's definitely rumors going all around, and uh, you know, but Adam, I thought was a, was a good guy to have, but you know, sometimes decisions got to be made. Right. Sometimes you cross Kenny the wrong way, and he says, "You're cut. You're gone." <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, with that, uh, speaking of going places, what? Are some of your other aspirations in terms of where you want to go, what you want to do? Like, are you are you looking maybe to go towards the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship? Uh, are you looking to maybe? I know you recently got put into heavyweight status. Are you looking to maybe say, I'm coming for your belt? Yeah, you know, uh, what are you f- <clears throat> just trying to be, you know, team player, and that's what makes us so strong because, uh, you know, nobody's trying to go after the same same thing or, you know, or, or whatever. We all support each other, uh, you know, put in the heavyweight. Uh, you know, I was recently thinking, you know, trying to drop a little bit and, and get back to the junior heavyweight division because Bullet Club didn't have anybody, but now Marty Scrolls there and, uh, you know, wrestling in. The best of the super juniors that started last night, and uh, you know, it, and he's you know a great competitor. So I don't really have to, you know, really.
really think about that unless I just, you know, want to and give us another option. Right. So basically it's like, hey, Chase, can you take part in this? Sure. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here to help you guys out. You know, and, and another example, you said you're there to be a team player. You ended up in the uh, Super Junior Tag Tournament because, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, – or no, you had returned – in 2016 because Nick Jackson had gotten injured. Right. And that's you know, the, where you ended up. Nick got hurt and, and uh, you know, just needed somebody to fill in. And that's what, that's what it's about. You know, it's when you got a close knit group like that, in my opinion, it's all about having each other's backs, which is what the bull club is. We got each other's backs. Now, yeah, uh, you, you know, just, see yourself. Just this match with Fale, you know, Fale and Okada just had. Uh, you know, I went to the ring with Fale, and, you know, and he could have easily went out there by himself, uh, you know, but we went out there, and, uh, you know, anytime he was in control, you know, I was yelling for him to breathe because when you're out there in big matches, uh, you know, I've done it. You, you forget to concentrate on breathing, and then you, you blow up and you're fatigued faster. You know, so I, I was out there any chance I could, trying to give, uh, trying to give him some, you know, encouragement because it's it's easier when you hear something and you know, you might not be thinking it, but if something's yelled out to you, you're like, oh yeah, right, right, breathe. I mean, it's it's one of those things that they always say slow your breathing down, control your breathing because if you start hyperventilating, you're liable to pass out. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants to be peeling a guy that's like passed out that needs oxygen off the mat. <laughs> it's not exactly a, a fun day. Um, now, who in your current state right now, you know, in, in the companies that you're in, who would you say are some of the dream matches that you're looking forward to potentially, you know, facing? And And you know what? You can even say if it's one of your own guys that you would love to have a dream match against. Don't worry. Uh, I don't think they'll take any offense to it. <laughs> yeah, you know, like like we said, Kenny's definitely one of the best, uh, you know, and I wouldn't mind having a a friendly competition match with him, uh, you know. But uh, as far as other guys, you know, I'd love to have single matches with guys like Kushida or uh, – you know, Okada. You know, I've had matches with Osprey and, and Ricochet and Liger, but uh, you know, I've done a lot. And what about you know, uh, really, what about Dijak? I don't really. Thought of a Dijak? Yes. Yeah, you know, he's a, a good. He's still with Ring of Honor, right? Or. Uh yeah, he's still Ring of Honor. Actually, I have a guy that I would absolutely love to see you face. Because of, you know, have you heard of Limitless Keith Lee? Yeah, I think I have. He's the one that had the match at Evolve with Dominic Dijak. Oh, no. Then he have a match. Yeah, he also had a match against Ricochet as well. Yeah, yeah. He's the 300 plus pounder that moves like a cruiserweight. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know exactly who you're talking about. You ever? That's a man. Now that's a dream match. I would love to see for you for for independent guys. I think that would be an amazing match. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm open. Whoever, wherever. Uh, you know, like I said, I've done a lot. So a lot of my dream matches, I've uh, I've already already done. But you know, as they always say, iron sharpens iron. So you know. To be the best, you got to face the best and compete with the best. So, uh, you know, I'm definitely down for well, it. Well, the Nature Boy did say it best. To be the best, you got to beat the best. Nope. Oh, you know, I always um, go by that. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, now here's another question. Um, if the call comes and WWE gets a hold of you at some point and says, we want you in NXT – do you opt to make the move, or are you happy with where you're at? Uh, they'd have to really throw out some things because, uh, you know, I'm pretty happy um, on what I'm doing right now. And, you know, and truthfully, a lot of guys don't like it, but 
I love being able to wrestle on the indies and just travel wherever I want and, uh, you know, meet new people, new fans, new wrestlers, compete in new places, uh, you know, and and right now, you know, I'm, I'm making the best money that I've ever made in, in wrestling, uh, you know, so there to be, if, if that came about, you know, they'd have to really throw out some uh, good things in, in the contract. Which is fully understandable, and, and especially considering that their ex, their excruciating travel schedule, from my understanding, I think it's something like 300 days a year that you're on the road. Uh, that's what everybody says, but I don't think it really ends up being that many. Well, speaking of uh, WWE, are there any guys that, if they became free agents and ended up on the indie circuits, or hypothetically speaking, say you did end up with you know that offer to go there, and it was, and it was up your alley to where you said, you know what, I'll give it a shot. Who who are we'll say like five guys that you would love to step in the ring with between either the main roster or NXT. Uh, you know, and there's so many guys that have been picked up recently. Uh, you know, I've I've wrestled a lot of them too, but uh, you know, definitely guys like Seth Rollins, um, you know, TJ Perkins, uh, some of the, the, I can't think of the, the cruiserweight guy. He's, he's from Chicago, the Ali, uh, I can't think of the uh, name. Right yeah, I can't think of it either. Was, uh, you know, and I've wrestled guys like Cedric Alexander, you know, and that, and that's another thing with, the contract with uh, WWE, there's so many people have got picked up that some guys are getting lost in the fold places. Uh, right. You know, and they're not getting, so even though they're there, they're not getting used or, you know. They're, they're not getting utilized the way that they should be. They're not, they're, their talents aren't being showcased. Right, you know, and there's just so many guys, you know, top guys too, get get picked up and still getting picked up. Uh, you know, rumors of Adam Cole going. And and I feel like you know, the Indies are a better spot because then, like you've stated, you can pick and choose where you go. In terms of you know, if if your agent comes up to you and says, "Hey, you know, I would like you to wrestle for." New England wrestling, I, I'm not sure of some of the other areas, territories, but, you know, or say you get an invite to come down to Ignite Wrestling or Real Pro Wrestling or uh, VIP Wrestling. If you don't want to work at a spot, you had that option. If you're working under a full-fledged contract, well, unfortunately you have to work in an area you don't want to really work at. Yep, you just go where you're told. Right. Plus you have more freedom to work your own schedule more or less with this. Now, do you see do you see yourself at any point um going into the G1 tournament? Uh, you know, that's another thing I'd like to do just because it's so uh dangerous, you know, and again, New Japan holds some of the the best, you know, professional wrestlers in the world. Uh, you know, sort of be able to do you know, I've wrestled pretty much everybody over there, but it's always six mans or eight mans or ten mans or you know whatever. But uh, you know, I would love to have those one-on-one matches. Right. Um, it's with Japan with New Japan. It, it feels like, and it, to me, I've seen this that. If you can wrestle in New Japan, you can wrestle anywhere because of the contrast in styles. And I've stated before, Japan, you have more or less your strong style. Um, England, you have your technical. Uh, Mexico, you have your high flyer. And then, well, I would actually, I would say England would be more of the, the ground and pound type. Canada would be more of the technical, and the United States is just a vast melting pot. But 
if you can wrestle in Japan, you can wrestle anywhere. Yeah, I, I totally believe that because cause there's guys from all over the world in Japan. You know, uh, you've got guys like Zack Saber Jr. who's great at technical wrestling. You know, you, you've got guys like Shibata and Ishii. You know, go to those guys who bring that strong style. You know, there's every every type of wrestling. Uh, in New Japan, you know, you have to adapt. Um, who now? I got. I'm curious. I got. What is one of you, one or two funny road stories? You know, with you guys, with with you and the Bullet Club. You know, on your travels, whether it was here in the states or over in Japan. Come on, we need a good laugh, man. Uh, Don't worry. I promise. If it's something embarrassing, I won't tell the person. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't really know any like actual funny or you know or whatever. We just we just go to dinners and you know and just hang out and have a good time. Uh, you know, I can't think of nothing right off the bat that sticks out. I can respect that. A lot of people, that's what, you know, I've heard a lot of people that they're, you know, they stick to that routine, but then you get some that are out, you know, doing just the crazy outlandish things. But it's, it's funny because you look at the group that, you know, you get some of the club that looks like they're the pranksters, the jokesters, the life of the party. And then you get the other ones that are just the serious, mellow, laid back kind of guys. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, a good mix with us, and, you know, and like I said, everybody gets along, and uh, you know, there's there's never any tension or you know anything. You know, we go wrestle, we go we go to the dinners or sponsor dinners or you know or whatever, and uh, you know, it's just good times, just the, the boys talking and you know and and figuring out what's next for the group or you know or whatever. Right on. Um, I mentioned something about the WWE previously. You actually did wrestle there one match, and I believe it was with Ricky Reyes in a handicap match against Ryback. What was that experience like? Uh, you know, to that date, it was the, the biggest match that I've had. You know, it, was, uh, it aired May 25th, 2012, so it was whatever that Tuesday was, so probably... 22nd, 23rd, but, you know, going out there. I believe it was, was an episode of SmackDown. Yep, and it was, uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, definitely the biggest crowd that I've been in front of to that point. Uh, you know, again, the biggest match I'd been to that point. Uh, but, you know, it was, it was nerve-wracking knowing that all these agents and Vince and, you know, everybody was, was watching it. Now, what was the – you you didn't really get to be back in the locker room much of it, but what was the atmosphere back there like? Uh, you know, it's pretty laid back. Uh, you know, they got catering and, you know, and places to watch watch the show, et cetera. You know, everybody's super chill. Uh, you know, I can't recall any time that there's been anybody that I thought, you know, was – complete jackass or, you know, or anything like that. Everybody was pretty much helpful, and if you needed, you know, anything, you could just ask somebody and they'd help. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe this was back in the uh, CM Punk era. (laughs) I think. Now, speaking of him, now, I know there's a lot of – now, I'm going to ask this before I ask this the CM Punk question. What would you consider yourself, a pro wrestler or a sports entertainer? Pro wrestler, for sure. Uh, and I can 100%, like I said, I call it pro wrestling. I can respect that, sir. Now, knowing how pro wrestlers feel, and we'll, we'll just throw it out there for some of the ones that don't, don't like to be called that, the sports entertainers feel about CM Punk in general. 
Now, there's one place I know he hasn't touched, and that's New Japan. Um, how would you feel if he were to ever say, you know what, I'm going to lace the boots back up, I'm going to come to New Japan? What would you think of that idea? Oh, I think it'd be big for the company. Uh, you know, it's uh, you know, Sam Punk was probably one of the hottest guys going before he just up and left because he didn't like the way I'm sorry, anybody. what was that? You're, you're fading out. I said he was putting in night in and night out, the best matches and the best, you know, on the microphone, and he could do it with anybody. You know, so for him to come to New Japan, I think it would be, uh, you know, super big for the company. Now, do you think the company would need CM Punk or CM Punk needs the company? Uh, I don't think anybody really, you know, need the other, but... uh. You know, I think it would it would definitely be you know big benefits for both. You know, like I said, Punk being able to to put on the matches and uh, you know, not like he needs exposure, but you know, for him to to be able to wrestle and not be you know the entertainment. Uh, you know, I, I think right. people would get to see you know the CM Punk that he wanted everybody to see. And I agree. He was definitely pound for pound one of the best. Um, speaking of, you know, pound for pound, some of the best. If you could choose one or two members to next, if say you were handed the reins to the Bullet Club and they said, Chase, you're in charge, and you get to pick the next two guys that come into this group, who would you pick? Uh, definitely Jason Kincaid. You know, like I said earlier, he's one of the absolute best guys that I've ever been in the ring with, uh, you know, and that's out of anyone. And, uh, you know, I'd probably, I'd have to go to the loyalty with with my old Bud Rose, Matt Sigman. But do you bring his partner with him? No, I can't put up with Elliot. No, Elliot's one of my (laughs) closest friends, too. You know, if, uh, you know, he's another one, he's another guy that, you know, he's not, but four or five years into the business, I think, if that. But uh, you know, when he when he started coming around, he was a guy that actually wanted to do it right and not just you know go wrestle for the local show just to say that he was a wrestler. You know, he was wanting to travel and and not wanting to jump in. You know, before he was actually ready, uh, like a, a lot of guys. Right you know, do now. Uh, he was willing to put you know, forth the time and effort. Yeah, and still, you know, he's still learning, and he, he's still, you know, never, uh, you can tell him things, and he doesn't get all, you know, pissy and, and butt hurt because you told him something didn't look good. Uh, you know, and that's that's what you got to have. You know, that's what I, I said earlier with Sigmund. Uh, you know, even though he doesn't wrestle the style that I wrestle, but, you know, I can always go and ask him how something looked. And, you know, if it looks bad and he says it looks bad, then I'll take his word for it. And I either, you know, try to figure out a way to make it look better or I stop doing it, you know, because I want everything to look good. And that's what you want, you know, and speaking of things looking good, I got to ask your opinion, Randy Orton. How do you feel about his comment? I mean, you know, wrestling like ice cream. Everybody's got their own flavor. You know, I don't know why so many people are getting all tore up about it, or you know, or whatever. I mean, it is what it is. You know, just hey, I'm, doing I'm what on you're the doing. little Osprey train. I'm going to go buy a shirt that says dot 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 dive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with Osprey style. You know, like, like no, I said, it, not at everybody's, all. it's, it's like Baskin Robbins. You know, there's different flavors. It's more or less, you know, you had the '80s guys picking on the '90s style, the '90s style picking on the 2000s style. That's all it is. It's just, you know, it's Randy Orton is now old you know, school. 
Yep. Well, that's going to continue down to. like that for, you know, forever. I mean. Exactly. But on that note, we are running down under the 10-minute mark. Uh, do you have any events coming up, Chase? Uh, I've got a ton of events coming up. I'm going back to Canada in August for 20 shows in 20 days across five different provinces. Um, you know, I've got a NWA Smoky Mountain on June 17th. Uh, I'll be making my debut in Michigan and Wisconsin June 10th and 11th. I've got shows June 9th uh, in Peter or in Jeffersonville, Indiana for Pro Wrestling Freedom, and, you know, and a ton more. And uh, you know, you can find those on my social medias on my Facebook, or I just posted it on Twitter and Instagram at Real Chase Owens. So you know the next time you're coming out towards Jersey, my friend, because you come out towards Jersey, I will definitely be there, and I'll have a beer uh, waiting for you. You know, I haven't uh, I haven't got to wrestle up in uh, in New Jersey much, but you know that's definitely a, a thing I'd love to be at. You know, in the Northeast, because uh, you know there's great companies and great competition up there. Well, I'll tell you what, the next time you're up around New Jersey, like I said, I'll keep an eye out. I'll send you a message, and I'll be waiting after the show like, hey. I got a beer for you, buddy. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Man. Okay, I'll be an. Can I? Can I at least be an honorary member of the Bullet Club for the night? Uh sure. All right, cool. I'll, be sure that <laughs> I'll take it for what it's worth. Um, well, I definitely had a blast having you on here, man, and I would love to have you back again. Yeah, anytime, man. Mm-hmm. Um. Could you any chance you can give us a little shout out? Yeah, man, no problem. Uh, this is Chase Owens, member of the Bullet Club, and you're listening to Body Slam the Competition on Blog Talk Radio. Give me a two sweet. Two sweet. Couldn't resist. <laughs> but uh, no, I like I said, I definitely, definitely appreciate it, man. Um, and if you have the opportunity to check us out yourself, uh, next week we have Rob Killjoy from The Ugly Ducklings. I know Ugly you're probably Ducklings. a little mad. I love Rob Killjoy. Uh, you're probably a little mad that he took Matt's title, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me guess. That's, 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 Matt's, that's Matt's problem, not yours. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah that's, his, that's their problem. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll definitely have that on there, man. I could send you a link for that if you want to check it out. Um, yeah, And sure. ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, you can uh, follow us on Twitter at BodySlamTheComp. Follow us on Instagram at BodySlamTheCompetition and Facebook as well. You can follow me on Instagram at Jetsman84. That's J-E-T-S-M-A-N-8-4. And be sure to hit the follow button underneath the profile picture here on Blog Talk. Once again, I am your host, Ray Celepino, and I am here with Bullet Club member, current NWA Southeastern Heavyweight Champion, and current New Japan Pro Wrestling star, Chase Owens. Chase, again, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, sir, and you have yourself a good one. Ladies and gentlemen, we will see you Saturday for our NXT review show. See you then. <laughs>